Okay, so the next part of our program that we need to generate is this part that says develop the part of the program that checks if the result of the die roll will allow a player to move either of their pieces this turn. If no move is possible, then an appropriate message should be displayed and the player's turn is finished. Now, the thing about Aquadu is that the only time you can't make a move is basically if both of your pieces are on the start and you roll a four. In any other circumstances, whatever you roll, you should be able to move. If I'm at the start, I should be able to move forward um, at least you know, one, two, or three uh, spaces. If I've got uh, one piece at the finish and another piece here, um, no matter what I roll, either one, two, or three, um, because it says in the rules that if, if you roll more than you need to reach the finish, then it just stops at the finish. So um, that would be valid. Um, yeah, there's no move that is invalid other than being at the start and rolling a four. Because if you're at the start, you can't go backwards. It's the only it's the only thing that you can't do. So really, this task is asking us to write a program that checks if if you're the current player, if your pieces are at the start and you roll a four, you can't go. Otherwise you can go. So we're going to develop this part of a program as a little function that will return true or false as to whether they can or cannot make a move. So let's go back to Replit and create a new subroutine for this. Let's call it def and let's call it um, check player can move and I'm going to accept a parameter to this one so it's going to be a function and it's going to take in the dice value so I'm going to say die and we we can make use of the uh, global player turn, so I don't need to include that in the parameter, but I could do. Um, and it's basically going to take in a die value, and it's going to check um, based on the um, whose go it is and the position of their counters, it is going to return true or false whether they can or cannot move. So let's have a go. All we need to do is say, well, if die is equal to four because remember it's only if the die rolls a four that we even care because if it's anything else they'll always be able to move so if the die is rolls four okay now let's do another if i'm going to do this as an, a nested if i'm going to say if player turn is equal to one so if it's player one's go now we can say well if player uh, if p1 counter one is equal to one so it's on the start and p1 counter two is equal to one so if both if it's if it's player one's go if we've rolled a four and it's player one's go and both of player one's counters are at the start then we're going to return false i.e we're going to return a negative it's you can't move check player can move false can't do it um but let's see elif player turn is two if player two's counter one is at one and player two's counter two is at one, then again we want to return false. Now, if none of those things are true, let's say it's either the dice just isn't four, or it is four, but it's um, it is player one's go, but uh, that just isn't true. Um, they're not both the start, or if it's player two's go, and again um, that's not true. They're not both the start. Then this, the ifs will just finish. They'll just stop and execution will go down to uh, this next line of code where I'm just going to do return true. So basically it's going to return true if if it doesn't return false, if that makes sense. So in any other circumstance, if the die roll isn't four or if it's player one's go and their pieces are not both at the start or if it's player two's go and their pieces are not both at the start, then it will just return true because yes, you can make a move. So we're going to roll a die and we now need to kind of test this. So we say, well, if, um, and let's say, if check player can move. Ah, when I roll the dice, I need to save its value. So I'm going to, I'm going to roll the die and assign the value it returns to die. So I'm going to say, well, if check player move, and I'm going to drop die in as my uh, very, as my parameter argument. So I'll say, if check player can move um, using this dice value, if that's the case, they can move, then I'm just going to put a pass in here now and a little hash, uh, a little comment to remind me. So code for making a move or for selecting a piece to make a move. But I can also say, well, else, 
and I'll simply say print. Um, I'll put their name in. Uh, let's store the current person's name actually somewhere. That might be quite useful. I haven't got that in here up to now, but let's just add that current player name equals let's just make it player one name to start with but when we um, change turn uh, when I show turn oh, I haven't got a change turn yet but I, I need to create one of those um, but we're going to put in uh, the, the current player's name so we'll say um, let's say Dave or Jane or whoever um, cannot uh, move or we could even say there are no legal moves for blah blah to make uh, and I'll format and drop in a current player name which let me just remind myself is what I came up with current player name so there are no legal moves for them to make and we can just say input um, press enter to change turns dot 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 and that has drawn attention to the fact that we do kind of need a, um, a switch turns or change turns uh, procedure. So let's make one of those. Uh, def change turn. And this is quite easy. We're going to need to access global uh, player um, to player turn and current player name. And we're just going to say if player turn is equal to one then we want to switch it to become two so we just set player uh, turn equals two and current player name equals p2 name else player turn equals one and current player name equals p1 name okay so it's going to switch not only the uh, variable that stores whose name whose go it is but it's also going to it's going to update this current player name uh, so we'll be able to refer to the current player really easily throughout our program so we've now got play game it shows the board it rolls a die it checks if they can move and it either we're going to then run some code to make the move happen or we say ah sorry you can't actually do anything um end of go for you okay and then we get an input which is just them waiting to uh, press enter to then uh, switch turns which I haven't actually done so we then will need a switch turn um, at the end of all of this so change turn okay and that will change the players turn right that should have done um, task 5